top three things in my notebook this morning. Number one is Europe. <laughs> number two is the U.S. dollar. Number three, the 10-year bond yield, both in the U.S. and in Germany. Uh, first on Europe, across the board, you got almost like the perfect Goldilocks scenario because the German data is a little bit better. It's not great, but it's a little bit better on the PMI. And the French data is a little bit terrible. I mean, a little bit terrible French data, a little bit terrible Greek data, which means that there will be more cowbell in Europe. There will be more money printings. There will be lower bond yields. And there will be this ramp in European equities. So again, that is what it is. Don't fight the trend. At the same time, the DAX uh, or Denmark, whatever you're long at this point, up 23 to up 32 percent for the year to date, is obviously beating the S&P 500 by a country mile. Now, point number two, the U.S. dollar, the counter trend move, which was a down one and a half week or two week move in the dollar was to be bought in as much as selling commodities was the other side of that and or anything that looks like a commodity or has commodity inflation expectations built into it, which would include energy stocks, energy bonds, etc. So again, U.S. dollar holds immediate term trade support. It bounces. It had a good 2% move off um, a higher low. And what we'd say this morning is that the dollar is overbought. So again, it's immediate term trade overbought in as much as a lot of these great deflation shorts uh, are oversold. So again, cover some shorts and uh, book some gains on the dollar side. Again, it's not changing the trend view. It's just trading, which, you know, we crazy guys from Canada tend to do. Uh, Ten-year bond yield finally is just a fantastic move to the downside for German boons, uh, 0.16%. We'd reiterate that we like German boons. And, and again, the intellects may not like it, but we're getting paid uh, because we're not that intellectual. So again, German boons, new lows, 0.16%. And the tenure in the U.S. falling to one spot, 9.1%. Uh, the big wild card here is, of course, the employment report, which is on Friday, and the market will be closed that day. But wouldn't it be interesting if it was the first bad employment report in rate of change terms in the last seven months? So those are your top three things.